of the Descent to Sound system that you guys have. It's a portable sound system. You can take it anywhere. So if you need to move it from this location, you just unplug it. Everything's going to be color coded and I'll describe the colors of each spot as we go. Uh, Greg's currently putting on the tape for the color, co uh, co color coordination as we speak, so we'll get that taken care of for you. But basically, the system's pretty simple. There's just an amplifier, and then you're going to have a basic video uh, USB sound card that's going to take over the sound and audio for the system. Um, it's made by Focusrite, and it's a Scarlett. Um, it is actually hard to see, but it's that little red guy that's down there, and we'll go through what the buttons need to look like and stuff like that. Uh, everything that I talk about today is going to be in this manual, which will be in the drawer, okay? So anything that I say, I did step by step exactly how to plug it in. So this manual is kind of like your Bible for this system. Um, all of the buttons, LED lights, I took pictures of everything and inserted it in here so that if there's a question, you just refer to this manual, we'll get you taken care of. If you go to set it up and you do have a problem with the system, super simple. The contact information on the back uh, is right on the back here at CCS Presentations. And this is our number to the shop right here, the 904-998-7227, okay? So you would just call that number or you could send an email uh, to service at ccssoutheast.com. That automatically creates a ticket in our system and our service techs will contact whoever called. So if, if it is a person that's not gonna be here in the future, make sure the information that they leave is for somebody who's always gonna be here so that they can contact them and walk them through the system. Um, that aside, your manual side will get into the system. So you have a 4K UHD LG here. This is gonna be your display output. Um, what you're typically gonna be looking for to be displayed here is if you're playing any video or anything like that from a laptop that's on top of the device, uh, that's on, on top of your rack. It'll output the video to this display and then you can use it as like a presentation system if you want. If you're not doing a Zoom call, you can use the system in many ways. So I'll do an example of that now. What you'd want to do in order to get this set up with the system is you'll have your laptop and then basically you're just going to plug in your laptop with the cables that are provided at the top and I'll kind of do an explanation of the cables because there is a few of them up here. So the first cable that's up here is your USB cable. This one goes to the camera, which you place on top of the display, and that'll look out over the room. For what we're doing now, we don't need the camera, so I'll set that little guy aside. Let's see, right in there so it doesn't fall off the table. If you want to listen to just music, this little three and a half millimeter cable is made for that. It'll plug into an MP3 player if you have an old school CD player. Anything that you can output music that's got three and a half millimeters, some phones still have the jack on it, uh, you would just plug this into the system and then the other side of the cable will always be plugged in to the three and a half millimeter audio jack that's right there. This one won't have a color label or anything like that on it um, just because it never comes out. So it'll always be there. And then if you do use the system in that manner, the device that drives the audio to the speakers actually needs to be powered so there's a USB port that's here, a second USB port that goes to the focus right. Um, it's N50, whoops, where's that? That was a cat cable. Uh, this guy right here, the U101. U101 is linked to your sound driver. So you'd wanna take this and make sure that you plug it in and then plug it into the wall outlet to give it power. Kind of like uh, your iPhone charger, anything okay. like that. You would do that and it'll power up the device which then Will transmit the sound to the speakers. For what we're doing, you can, or if you're just playing music through your laptop, just like this, you take the USB cable and then you're just gonna make sure that it fits the port correctly, thick side to the open side, and then you'll plug it in. So now, with this device plugged in, the audio is on on the focus right down there. It powers on the unit automatically. All of the drivers are gonna load on any computer that you have. Doesn't matter if it's a Mac, if it's Windows, anything like that. Um, the caveat to having a Macintosh computer though is it's USB-C. So if somebody's having a meeting here and you guys contact the people for the meeting, you wanna make sure that you tell them that they need to bring their own USB hub because there's only one way to plug into a Mac 
and if they have a brand new laptop as well, a lot of the newer laptops only have USB-C, but we made this compatible with all systems, so they would just have to bring a hub. And then once they get that USB-C to all the other connectors on their hub, they would plug it in the exact same way that I'm showing you now. So USB into the computer, and that's gonna allow us to have audio. What you would do on your laptop is in the lower right-hand corner where you have your volume control, or on the Macintosh, it's in the upper left because everything's always the opposite. Um, you're just gonna go to your audio device and you're gonna push the little button that's right there. So you'll left click and then open up your microphone. What you wanna make sure that's selected is speakers and then focus right USB audio. That means that the focus right that's down there has taken over the audio from your laptop through the USB cable and it's good to go for sound output to the speakers that are in the room. So seems complicated but really all you have to do is just plug in the USB cable and nine times out of ten it's going to output sound and you're good to go. If it doesn't then you know what to check. Um, and you can just hit the little arrow if it's not selected automatically there's a little arrow you'll just click the little arrow and then you select the focus right USB audio from the list. So we've covered those two. And then you have the HDMI cable, and these are all the wires that come out of the top of the device. So your HDMI cable is going to be for video output from your laptop to the display. So as soon as I plug this little guy in, everything's automatic. You just plug the HDMI in to the HDMI port on the laptop, and there's only one, one device. And you automatically notice sound came out. You heard the little beep doo doop That's Windows letting you know that it's doing things. And then you have... Your screen here should be the exact same screen that you see over here. If it doesn't, if you get like your screen here but then over here it looks like an extended desktop with no icons, what you would do is within Windows you want to right click your desktop, go to display, and then choose the option down at the bottom, duplicate these displays. That way if the person has to stand here and control it, they know exactly what's on the screen for what's over here. Um, and that's more for presentation purposes. When we get to Zoom, I'll explain to you guys how to assign a host to somebody else so they can control the meeting from anywhere in the room. You can even do it with somebody that's off-site, okay? So we have that, and then basically, if you want to play a video or anything like that, you would just play. Your next memory is out there. It might be a small one. because in this room there's nothing on the walls that's going to catch the sound. If you need to adjust the volume, do it through windows. So that volume was exceptionally loud because my volume on my PC is set at 100%. And that might happen with certain people that come in to control the Zoom calls. So all you have to do is just use your Windows slider to control all the volume. None of the people need to get into your rack to adjust volume or audio or anything like that. And that's the beauty of the system. It's real simple. Um, do you guys have any questions on that or anything so far? Pretty so, simple, right? Yeah. Just like plugging in your TV at home to your laptop. So uh, if you would say it would be better for this to just to be stationary in that room and we have cars to just come straight out here? You can do that. Um, there will be a couple of things that you would need other than what's here. Mm -hmm. The wireless access point, this little guy, I would definitely recommend it being able to be brought out into the room so that the, because this wireless access point communicates directly with your microphones, so you, you don't have to have a line of sight and it's got 350 to 450 foot of range, so it might not affect it, but the walls are brick. So if you put it in there and you close the metal door, you might get sound drop if people are farther back in the room. If they're closer to the front, probably not going to have that type of problem. It's probably just going to work for them. 
you won't have to worry about it. But if you do get sound dropout, you can either open the door and try, or you can bring it out. If you do need to bring it out, we provided you guys with a hundred, a hundred foot yeah, cable. Oh, yeah. Um, it's basically a quarter inch cable. guys will have a hundred foot quarter inch cable. If you decide to go that route, the far end audio is only going to come out the big speakers because there is a cable on here that is only 10 feet long, okay? So that means this has to be about 10 feet from the rack at all times. And what I mean by far end audio, that's people that are at home talking. So when the people at home talk on Zoom or whatever, it also comes out the handsets. So the speakers and audio coming through the speakers will work fine at any range you want to go up to like 100 feet. But for this microphone to output sound from people on the far end, and I'll demonstrate that in a moment too, you have to be about 10 feet away from the rack because of the cable. You can, if you want, extend that. Um, if you want to get a coupler and you want to use, buy another one of these cables, this is a real we can set you guys up with that if that's a Jack need. And Barbara, professional but wildlife photographers and really, the system's easy to take up and tear down. Like Alaska. it takes 10 minutes hey, max, what's the so you could bring it out here. That's kind of how it's intended to be used. Plus the person that controls the Zoom call will need to make it's adjustments to the laptops and they might not want to walk back in the room and wait for everything. Well, they could order equipment from any number of sites. That's up to you guys how you use it, but it can be done. Anytime okay. we need anything, so I'm not telling you no, I'm just saying you'll lose a little bit of a feature if you do go that distance. And of course the phone or phones are working. If the phones are working. I needed a tripod, but it had to be light, it had to be sturdy, so I talked with so that's pretty much that little guy and setting up this piece. The next part of the system itself is going to be your speaker audio cables. So how are the speakers connected? They use NL4 connectors, which basically are high-end speaker connectors. It's a, it's a pull clip and a twist to get it to go in and come out. So what you would do with it is you pull your thumb out, twist, and then pull out. It's made so that it's always locked in. If somebody walks by and accidentally kick the cable or something like that, it's not gonna come out. Can you turn it this way, please? Sure can. So it, it's unlike anything you've probably seen. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty common in the AV industry and for high-end audio, um, but it's not like something you've seen at home. So when you put it back in, all you have to do is line up the tab. There's a little tab on the bottom. You just line the tab up with the slot and then twist and it'll automatically click in. And no matter how hard I pull on this, short of breaking it, it's not gonna come out. So you're good there. And there's two of those, and those run to the speakers themselves. So you have the QSC speakers here, these are E110s. And then basically these are just simple loudspeakers. And then the simple loudspeakers are about 200 watts each. So plenty of sound to drive the system. They plug in to the back and it's gonna go in the top outlet that's in the back of the unit. The bottom outlet is just a parallel, so if you wanna just plug in one and then jump one straight to the next without plugging into the rack and running through there, you can do that um, to simplify things, or you just plug this one in and plug that one in just the same way. And then this works the same. You pull and twist, it comes out, and then line up the tab, twist. When you hear the click, it's locked back in and you know it's good to go. And with the speakers as well, that kind of brings me to the speaker devices themselves. You'll notice that there's two holes on the speakers on the bottom. You want to make sure that you put the speaker on the back hole. The front hole is meant for a different size stand. So the back hole that's on the bottom, the one toward the rear of the cabinet, the shaped piece, is where you plug in the stand. And that'll keep the speaker pretty stable on here. The other hole is a little bit bigger and it'll wobble more. Also with the stand, you don't want to exceed probably seven, eight feet with the height of the speaker. These weigh about 45 to 50 pounds each. And if somebody walks by and hits it, there's a chance that it could fall over. So you want to avoid that at all costs, right? And then with the base, these base legs on here, always make sure that you keep the legs at least two feet apart. That's going to keep it super stable. It's next to, 
I don't want to say it's next to impossible to knock over, but it's it's stable. Like it's not gonna fall if they're like two, two and a half feet apart. If you want to make it more stable, you feel a little uncomfortable, you're like, eh, I need to go up a little higher because people are way in the back. You can just spread your spread the legs a little bit farther apart so that it's got a more stable base to it. Okay? Um, and that brings me to using this. So if you want to zoom in on this little guy right here. It's basically a twist lock system that's on here. And a little more around. Um, the twist lock system has lock, raise, and lower. All you do is twist to the position you want to go to. Make sure the arrow lines up with the color, and then you're good to go. If you put it on raise, you're fine, okay? You don't have to have much support or anything like that, and then you'll just lift and the pole will raise itself up. But if you hit lower, make sure if you drop it over to lower, you've got a hand on this so it just doesn't come straight down. It doesn't do that now because there's tension on the inside and it's new, but as it gets older over time, it's gonna basically, it'll wear down. So, you know, five, 10, 15 years from now, somebody flips it to lower, it just, <laughs> and the speakers are heavy. So make sure that, you know, two people to lift it, and then two people to move the speakers, two people on the TV when you go to move the TV around even though it's on a rolling cart. One person can do it. I'd recommend two for everything, okay? So that's the locking system, and it's basically just twist, raise, lower, and then you always wanna make sure you twist it back to red for lock. That way over, like, over the course of your meeting, you don't notice your speaker slide down because the speakers vibrate, so it'll eventually work itself back down. So those are your speakers. And those are connected with these connectors right here. The HDMI cable, which is going to be a red color. So I'll go over the colors really quickly. You've got a wireless access point LAN that's going to be green. Or, yes, green. And then basically a PC LAN, which is green as well. The two speakers are going to be blue, and they're going to go to blue markers that are on each of the speakers. The speakers are blue, the cable is blue. It's pretty easy to identify those. The HDMI cable is going to be a red color. And then we'll also put a red color on the display. This cable basically runs down through the brush grommet. So you just plug it in. Um, you want to run it through the bottom first and back up the way we have it plugged in here. And then you'll plug in the HDMI cable to the top. It runs around the device. And make sure you go along the back side so people don't trip on it. And it'll come over to the display. It's probably easier if we go to this side to see it. And it plugs in HDMI 1 on the display. And you can see Greg already has it with the red. So we have red here, and then we have red there, and it just plugs right into the TV on the back port. You can plug it into the two side ports here and here, if that's easier and more convenient for you. You just have to remember that the TV, sometimes when you first turn it on, will only go to HDMI 1 right off the bat. So if it comes up and it says no HDMI displayed, you would just go on your controller, uh, the, the display controller, and then you would just wanna choose video settings and then you just choose a different HDMI port whichever one you plugged it into or if you have multiple devices plugged in same thing if you have two laptops up here two different people running zoom meetings you can do that and switch between their displays yep so we're all set with that I think that's all of the inputs that are on the front um, and that kind of gets me to the wireless access point this works for the Decenta system alone it's got a set frequency that only works for those microphones, okay? So nothing else can connect to this. If people that come into your meetings are concerned with security and safety, like, oh, I'm talking into this wireless device, it's being sent out over the internet, it's not really. They're being sent out over the internet through Zoom, not through the Decenta system. The Decenta system is fully secure. So it's very, very, very low chance that somebody would pick up that frequency from someplace else and listen in on the conversation. Um, it's all set that way and then on the wireless and it'll support up to 22 microphones currently you guys have eight I think at this location if you need more microphones you can contact Dan Phillips at CCS presentations um, or I think for you guys you would talk to Robert Gray and then he'll contact Dan and then give you more speakers um, and I unplugged it from the wall there we go <laughs> so now we have no microphones but Basically, this little guy right here that's yellow is plugged in 
where it's yellow. I'm not going to go into the technical aspects of what it's doing, but just know this one's an output, this one's an input, white is your input side, yellow is your output side, and it matches with the colors here. And those colors will always be plugged into the device. They come through the top and they're non-removable, so all you have to worry about is matching your color to your device that's on top. The power cable is right next to it in the center. You would plug that in, and then you'll, and this is kind of a good demonstration of how to set it up. So this little guy basically comes on and off, so you can put this anywhere you would like. Then you would just slide it into the tabs that are located at the top on the back of the device, and kind of to show that so you can see it. It's just two metal tabs that go in two plastic hooks and it just slides down. It's super simple. If, if you're having problems with connection in the back of the room, you can undo uh, this little lock right here, pull this out, and then raise the pole. And that'll extend direction, because Wi-Fi kind of works like a waterfall. So it'll go out and come down. And then you'll take the power cable and you just plug it into the wall. Take this little guy, we'll plug it in, and then you'll notice the speakers will pop a little bit if the system's already on and you're already plugged in. That's letting you know, hey, there's an audio signal coming through, which are these two guys. The system itself is gonna light up, and when it does light up, it's doing an auto boot phase. What it's doing right now is looking for microphones in the room. So it'll come on, it'll boot itself up. Once it's fully powered on, the lights will light up blue when it's good to go, okay? So it's, it's okay to plug it in the system is already you can plug it in when it's on, when it's off, anything that you want to do with the system, it's fully safe. It's recommended to do it um, before you have the USB cable and all the audio so you don't have those audible pops or if somebody has a mic out there and they have the mic on, it may connect and you might start picking up noise or sound through the microphone, but most of the mics are off when it goes. So basically what you want to do is just wait for it to sit here and start flashing. Once it starts flashing, you know that it's good to search for the Decentis microphone handsets. Um, with the Decentis microphone handsets, the one thing that you'll want to do is always make sure that you turn on seat one first. Seat one? Seat one or microphone one. I'm not sure what they labeled them here. So we labeled them all for you guys, and I'll go... Basically, I'll start from the beginning. So you'll have microphone one or seat one, which is this microphone is the most important microphone of all of them. This one basically controls the Decenta system and allows the user to mute other users while they're talking. So if you're having a meeting, up to three people can speak at one time. When you get to the fourth person, it'll put them in a queue and it automatically mutes their mic until one of the first three stops speaking. That goes into effect for all except for the first microphone. Seat one can over talk anybody. Also seat one is gonna have a little button and I'll show you in a moment that you push it and it'll automatically mute the signal. So we'll, we'll do that. Um, before doing that though, I wanna show you guys how to insert the microphone and then insert the battery. The microphone just has two slots that are on the back here. The mic will be in the carrying case, which is over here and they kind of just slide in. The port goes down here to protect it from dust and debris. You just lay the microphone across here and then use your thumbs to push on either side to get it to slide into there. Um, you'll just take this little guy right here and it plugs into the port directly. So you just plug it in and then your mic's plugged in. It only goes in one way. When you go to take it out, it's a push-pull. So there's a little tab on it you push the tab in, that'll unlock it, and you pull out, okay? And then you basically, when you go to push it back in, hand on the back of it, just put, push it until it clicks, give it a little tug to make sure it's in there tight, okay? So super easy. And then for the insertion of the battery, basically all you have to do, there's teeth on the battery, and then there's teeth inside the battery port. The copper ports line, the copper uh, teeth line up with each other. You just drop it into place, kind of like a laptop or anything else like that, and it pretty much puts itself in. Just a simple push, you'll listen for the click, and then the device is powered up. Or not powered up, but the battery's ready to be, the battery's in the device and it's ready to be powered up. To get it to pair with the wireless device, as long as the blue lights are flashing on the Bosch system, which the way they are, you're just going to push the first and second button at the same time, hold it for like a second or two, and then let it go. When you do that, lights up green, as we see here, 
and that means that it's in pairing mode, kind of like a Bluetooth headset. You'll see in a few seconds that it's going to go out, but that's okay. The light's going out, which means it's starting the communication process. The microphone light comes on. This right here is your pairing, basically your pairing node. It's letting you know that it's starting to communicate with the device. Once it's finished with its communication, it's going to light up two lights down here at the bottom. Well, two lights on seat one, one light on seat two. So we have this set up. This is your talk button, which is a little face with some volume lines coming out of it. To talk, you push this button and then you speak. You want to keep your head about, basically for this, you want to keep your face about six to eight inches from the microphone because it's going to carry the sound in here pretty good. And then if you want to mute, you push this button right here. This mic will talk, no other microphone will talk. Um, that being said, it only mutes the other mics that are in the room. So if people are getting out of control in one of your meetings or something like that, something's happening, this isn't going to mute the system. The way to do that to stop it from going to the people on the far end would be to mute it via the host in Zoom itself. But this will at least stop people from yelling into their microphone and overpowering the rest of the people. Um, and one thing, I just want to turn the gain down just a little bit on this, and this will bring me to volume control. So when we turn on this microphone and I talked into it, when you talk into the microphone, the best way to, I guess, kind of judge how well the volume is in the room is if you talk and you're standing a good distance from the speakers like we were, you want to hear yourself, but also hear that. If that's overpowering your own voice when you're talking into the microphone, then that basically means the speakers are too loud. So. Okay, okay one question. Mm -hmm. There's no way for seat one to mute themselves? Basically, it, 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 if I have it off, like the light's not red, it's muted. Okay. Only when you push the button and then talk into it is it unmuted. And you'll notice, because of the acoustics of the room, we're getting a little bit of feedback, like that high pitch noise. If that happens, and I was going to do it more in the troubleshooting phase, but I kind of want to fix it now uh, before we go into the Zoom call. If that happens and you do a mic test before you start any of the Zoom or anything, over here in the front of the rack, let me show you really quickly. In the front of the rack, all of your audio is controlled by these knobs that are right here. What you want to look for on the focus right when you first power it on is that where it says direct monitor, you have two circles lit. There's a single circle on the left, there's two circles on the right, and then no circles. Basically what that correlates to are the two inputs. So if you have two inputs, you need two circles lit. And the inputs basically are, these inputs are one for audio that's coming out of the speakers from the computer, and the other input is audio that's coming from the wireless descent system. Okay, so it's a little bit hot, so we just turn this down a little bit. Little, little touches on the knobs that are next to each of the inputs, because that's gonna down, turn down the input volume. And then what we'll do is this knob right here, we'll just give it a, a turn down a little bit to about there. I had it pretty loud in our shop, so I set it up and tested it the other day, make sure it was good to go for you guys. Um, so, but our shop has different acoustics. There's lots of cardboard in there. So now when we test it, you notice the squeal is gone, right? It doesn't sound overpowering. I can hear myself talk now, and I can also hear myself a little bit out of the speakers, so you're good to go with that. So it, it's that simple to get it set up. The problem is knowing which knob to push when. Um, if you do have questions about that, the number that I gave you, like if you're having awful feedback and it's just not working, just call the number on the, in the uh, packet, the handout that I leave inside the rack, and then it's basically a direct line to us and we'll help you guys out if that's the case. Because I know uh, sometimes the people that have to run the meetings aren't exactly super technical savvy they might have a little bit of knowledge but when it comes to audio and high-end audio things get a little crazy when it comes to feedback and room acoustics and stuff like that so that's the first mic the second mic mic two through eight 
This could be any microphone, up to eight microphones. You guys have those. Same way, you just push the buttons. It's gonna automatically pair with the system. Light's gonna turn green. The green light's gonna go off. A red light will come up on the microphone. The system right there, you'll notice this time, it doesn't have two flashing lights, right? That's because it's paired with a device. So when it stops pairing, it stops looking, but it never really stops looking. So when this device comes up, it's gonna give the red signal, it's gonna to try to pair to the frequency where it's been set up. And then once it does that, you'll notice on this one, it's just gonna be the talk. So if I unmute this one and I talk into the microphone, if I push this particular button right here, that one, it'll stop this one from being able to speak. Okay. Um, it's hard to demonstrate with a single person. I understand what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's difficult to show. Mm -hmm. And then all of the microphones, it's a single push to talk and the microphone will stay on. So if the person's gonna talk a lot, they can just talk the way we're doing now and then touch the button and it'll go off. They can push and hold the button in if they want to, but the light will remain on if they do that. So it's basically push to come on, speak, push to turn it off. Okay, super simple. The mics um, themselves are really easy. And then that'll bring me to charging the batteries. So a lot of people ask, how do they power off? Well, they turn themselves off. That's one thing. They, they turn themselves off after about 20 minutes. However, I found in certain locations, like especially gymnasiums and that type of thing, the AC in here, like I can hear the AC. If there's any audible noise in the room, the microphones can sense that even when they're off in this state, so they won't turn themselves off, they'll stay on. So what you wanna do is just pop the batteries out of the bottom of each of the devices, so they're already out here. And then you're gonna plug the batteries into the battery charger that's in the rack over here. So inside your rack, if you do this from the back, you'll notice there's four lights, and all you have to do is line the teeth up, these copper teeth, with the teeth that are in the front left. All you have to do to remember that as well, like where are the teeth if somebody goes to plug it in, you have these little lights. The lights are in the lower um, left-hand corner, right-hand corner, sorry. Um, you just line that up, and then you'll gently just slide it in there until it finds the teeth slot, and it just falls into place, okay? You don't have to push it down or anything like that. It should just, you just give it a little wiggle and it just falls in. When it falls in, if you see the green lights, that means it's good to go and you're ready. On the battery itself, if you need to check a battery before, like let's say you have the batteries in the case and you just wanna see if it's good, if you just push this little white button that's on the battery, it'll show you how long of battery life you have. These have about 24 to 48 hours of speaking time. Um, or I'm sorry, eight hours of speaking time, 24 to 48 hours of just idle time. So if you leave the battery in and it stays idle, it'll last 24 to 48 hours, depending on how much it's turned on and off. Um, if you're talking directly into it, it's four to eight hours, depending. So any meeting over four hours, I'd recommend, you know, have a couple on backup, uh, batteries on backup, or keep a couple mics to the side charged so that if something does happen, you can just flip a battery real quick. And the batteries, I showed you how to charge them. Even if it's paired, all you have to do is just pop the battery out, pop it back in, and you're good to go. So this one's paired. You just pop the battery out. It's seat one, it was seat one. When I put the battery back in the unit, it's the exact same thing as we went through before. I just put the battery in, hit the two buttons, wait for the device to pair. It'll come up and it'll become seat one again. I did that with this particular handset inside the actual Decentis programming. And that's where you log in to the wireless device itself to control it. For end users, I really wouldn't recommend that. If you have a problem where the mics aren't pairing at all and they're just not connecting, I would say call us. Um, that, that just means that they may need to be reset. If you need to reset the device like in a pinch, the easiest way to, and you'll have to do it with every single microphone, when you get them powered on, on the bottom of the device, there is a small hole in it it basically is it's it's pretty tiny there so you have this small hole that's right here you're just going to take kind of like a q-tip you pull the fuzz off the end of the q-tip and then just take it and drop it down in there push it in for three seconds it'll reset the device the device will start flashing 
and then when it comes back on, it'll be completely reset, so it'll no longer pair with the descent system. But if it wasn't pairing prior to that, you would also, after you've done that to all of the microphones, you then do it to the Bosch, um, Bosch descent system as well. The reset button for the Bosch is located right here on the bottom. It's the same. It's just like resetting a modem. Push and hold it in for about 20 to 30 seconds. Release. All of the settings that we have pre-configured will go away. That will make it so all of the microphones can pair with it. So it'll still connect and everything will work fine because all of the microphones will auto recognize this when you hit the pairing button. You're just going to lose your seat priority. So if that does happen and you have to reset it to pitch, please call us. Um, one of us will walk you through it and get you taken care of. It's super simple to do, but um, if you don't know, you don't know. <laughs> now on your batteries, yes. um, are they also labeled seat one through eight? No, it doesn't matter which battery you use. That's a good question. It doesn't matter which battery you use in any device. Okay. okay. So that is pretty much an overview of all of the devices and you'll see we have it all color coded for you now. So it's super easy if you unplug it or plug it back in. The color coding system is also listed in this. Um, so you know, as you read down through it, it's gonna say plug in the yellow quarter inch cable to the port marked yellow. The good thing about the system though is all of the cables all have different ends. So the ends on the cables can only go into one of the slots. It's where they go from there that gets confusing, which is why we color code everything else. It doesn't matter with the speakers, whether one's on the left or one's on the right. We have stereo uh, mono coming out of, or I'm sorry, mono coming out of both channels. So you get left and right sound out of this, left and right sound out of that, doesn't matter. And that was just for ease of use. That way you don't have to keep track of which one's on the left and which one's on the right. And did they mean left front of the room or left as I'm facing the room? Those types of things. We just wanted to eliminate that altogether. So that's all taken care of. And that brings me to Zoom. So are, are the people that are gonna be running the Zoom meetings here currently, or one of you guys, you're gonna be running the Zoom, how familiar are you with Zoom? Pretty familiar, you've run the meetings before? So I'll do the abridged version. I won't go into how, how to start up Zoom and all that craziness. But for if you're not here, for instance, and somebody else has to run the meeting, in the back, back here, I went through all of the setup that I'm gonna show you here in a couple seconds for Zoom. I took pictures of it, it's how to connect, what you need to do when you connect to Zoom, where to go to test the microphone, all of that. I listed it all so it's really easy for you guys. Okay? So, in your laptop, basically once, once it's all plugged in and connected to the system, um, one of the things you guys will be adding, we're currently working off of the Wi-Fi, what you'll be adding is the PC LAN port. This is a green cable. We labeled it green right there. So if they come down uh, IDT from Jacksonville, if they stop by and they install you a LAN port on this wall, um, probably right here I would recommend because they've got all the pipes and stuff running to it already. We made a, a jumper, like a 50 foot jumper. Oh, okay, so you can go to another room. There, yeah, I think I saw in there, yeah, there's, there's a big 50 foot yeah. jack cable. Mm -hmm. So you would just take that and plug it into wherever. So if they want to give you an outlet in this room in here, if it's easier, because this is block wall, it's pretty hard. But if they put it in there, you can just run it into this PC LAN right here. And then the PC LAN would then just plug into your ethernet port on your computer, okay? So RJ45 connector, ethernet goes to ethernet port on the PC. For now, we're going to leave it unplugged because we're connected to Wi-Fi. And if they're connected to Wi-Fi, they're good to go. You don't have to plug in the 3.5 millimeter audio cable because HDMI carries the audio from here out to the system and vice versa. And your sound card is the focus rate. Okay? This, this output is actually tied into the front of the focus rate and is one of the inputs. So if you use an MP3 player, that's what I talked about earlier when you have to plug in the focus right to the wall, that's because it's not powered via USB. Or if you have a separate device, you can plug in the USB to a laptop to get the focus right to have power and then plug in a separate audio device here. So if somebody has a, a voice recorder and they'd like to play a speech or a, or a recording back to the group, they can plug it in and do that. So you're good there. 
um, back to Zoom. So all you have to do is just start up your Zoom application, connect to the internet, start Zoom. Uh, we'll just do new meeting. When you go to join a new meeting each time, it's going to ask you to do an audio test. I recommend doing this about 45 to 50 minutes before your meeting is going to start. That way you have time to troubleshoot and make sure everything is in line. So technically before a meeting starts, you want to be there maybe an hour, hour and 20 minutes before, 20 minutes to set up the stuff, an hour of just playing with Zoom to make sure the audio is coming through. When you're in Zoom itself, and it first starts up, there's a small option that says test speaker and microphone. You're gonna hit that. As soon as you hit that button, you wanna listen for the playback through the speakers. Walk to the right one, listen, make sure it comes out. Walk to the left one, listen, make sure you're getting sound out of the left. If it's not, you wanna check your connectors. So nine times out of 10, like right now, it's just coming out of this left side. But you just check your connectors, like somebody might plug it in but not snap it into place so it's not fully connected, okay? That's usually the cause. The other cause of no audio is the wrong sound device is selected down here under the audio settings. So when you choose the audio button, it may have the wrong speaker selected. So where it says speaker one, you just wanna make sure that it says focus right USB audio. And we're good there, so we hear sound, and then yes. So the next part is the microphone that's built into the device itself. It's basically focus right audio. Um, and what you'll do here is you just want to listen for a playback or a replay. So right now the microphone is set up as focus right USB audio. That means the microphone on the laptop is turned off and that the microphones in the room are active. So what we would do to test the microphones is you just want to walk over to your mic seat one, plug it in, pair it, and then mic check one two mic check one two and then it's going to play back mic check one two your audio now the level at which that plays back is the level that you're going to hear you'll be heard by people that are on the opposite end of the call so people are at home um people like in the room it's loud right but on the opposite end it's set inside the descentis this little wireless um, access point has volume control built into it too. So if they're having a hard time hearing on the far end, the th suggestion is to turn up their audio on their home computer, okay? If you need to turn up the audio, if people can absolutely not hear you, like we've tested it and you can hear perfectly fine right now, but if there, for some reason, over time, the settings just aren't enough, it's not driving enough sound, you can log into this, call the number, contact us. We can take this over remotely with uh, your ethernet cable that they're gonna run for you. You just plug it in. We can log into it from anywhere and then we'll adjust it for you. But there is a volume control in there if you wanna do that. And also to save you guys time so this isn't super long, I wrote down exactly what to do to troubleshoot the audio in here. It goes through how to log in to the wireless access point, how to set all the settings. Like you can choose to have it have more than three speakers allowed to talk at the same time. I just use the Jackson, the city of Jack's default, like what the other systems are at at the library. Question. Yes. Now, I know that it's set up wireless right now. Mm -hmm. On your cell phones, you can leave it where it automatically pair each time you go to a certain place. Will these automatically pair or you have to pair each time you set it up? Um, with the cell phones, are you logging in with Zoom? Or do you no, you're just like talking talk about it with the system right there. With the system. With the system. Is that like uh, pairing for LTT? Like, uh, no, anything. Okay, for instance, I have my cell phone set up to automatically pair with my car. If I cut my cell phone off, reset it or whatever, yeah. would not reset it, but cut it off, go back in the car, it's automatically paired to work. Gotcha. Gotcha. These, because he's not planning on leaving it out on the floor, he's planning on putting it back there. So each right. time, will he have to pair everything again? Or the, is the microphones? When when you turn it on each time, you do, you'll do you have to pair them. Okay. Like, not it's not really repairing, it's basically like turning them on. You hit the two buttons, they'll come on, and then they'll find it and auto-pair. Does he have to enter any information or anything like that? No. 
not at all. Or if he has all the microphones on, like he sets them up on the table, you just need to do mic one first. So you would hit mic one, mic one's gonna come on and it's gonna start searching for this guy, uh, this little guy right here. So it'll be searching until he plugs it in and gets that set up, then it'll find it. Once that's one, once that one's done, usually um, what I do with them is I do mic one, and then I just set up all of the other microphones everywhere that they're gonna go, and I just walk around and push the buttons, and then I you just leave it. It'll just connect itself. But you do have to hit the buttons for it to come on and for it to find it. So it's less like your phone, more like connecting your Bluetooth headset to your phone, like the actual headset, not the car. Okay. Okay. So when you start the pairing, you have to do mic one by itself. First. The others you can do at the same time. Correct. Yep. Mic one in for the pairing as well. It doesn't matter. After mic one, you can do six, two, and eight. It don't matter the order, but I'm yeah. just saying, you, like, it's, like what you said, once you pair mic one, then you just take the other, then you just start turning them on. Yeah, you just tap those two buttons like I showed you earlier, and once once mic one's tested and paired, all of the rest of the system pretty much works. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is walk away. It's kind of like set it and forget it. Just tap your buttons and go. Okay. Um, so in Zoom, we tested the mic, you hear the playback. The playback comes through, you hear the volume coming through the speakers, you know if it's low or high. You can adjust your output microphone level in Windows and within Zoom. So if that's something that it's too low, like let's say you have somebody that comes in and their output level when they're talking in those microphones, when it comes back through, through their Zoom host computer, it's really low, then I'll show you inside Zoom where to find it. Um, once you get past the wireless setup of the microphones and the audio test and the microphone test, what you'll do is make sure you hit join computer with Zoom. What you're looking for is for a microphone to appear down here with a mute button. So right now we're in a Zoom call, everything's set up to Zoom. The one thing that we're missing is the camera from the equation because you want the camera to come up. So basically, I'm gonna switch the camera in the system. Right now it's selected as this camera. You just plug in the USB B cable for the camera and it's gonna auto switch. So now, instead of the people on the far end at home staring at the person that may be up here doing the host work, they'll be able to stare out over the room. So that kind of brings me to the next question. Well, our host normally doesn't stand up in the front of the room, right? All you have to do is get another person that's a member of the meeting that's signed in with a laptop. They can sign in with their iPad, with anything else. And then all you all that you would need to do, let me maximize this so we can see all of the options. Down here on the bottom, there's a participants window. You would click on that. And if we had a second user, you would basically go to more functions. And then under that feature, when you have the second user on there, it's right up here. Um, under more when you have multiple users you would click on the second user and then set them as a co-host at that point you would just want to mute their laptop and audio on their laptop so that it doesn't get feedback so if I connect another laptop to this and all of the people in that come to the zoom meeting if they want to have that laptop in front of them where their picture goes out into the zoom meeting because they're logged in and not just use this camera to be logged into Zoom, they need to make sure that they mute their audio and their microphone on Zoom because all of the audio and mic settings within this room are controlled by the microphones and the speakers that are in the room, okay? It's kind of like this one. My microphone that's on my PC is turned off. I have it turned off and I set the focus rate, which is those microphones over there, as the primary microphones for the device. The other people, because they're not directly connected to our system, having their laptops, they won't be able to do that, so they just mute it flat out. Um, so that's pretty much how to set the participants. You can hit this little button right here and invite others to the meetings. When you click invite for the meetings, if you're not familiar with Zoom, the number for the invite is listed at the top. So that's the number that you would want to give. It's also going to be the number that's sent out to the participants via the email that your Zoom administrator would set up. 
um, the C is it CPAC that comes here to do their meetings as mm -hmm. well? Yes. Okay. So CPAC has something. Um, it, it's I think Sitting it's called around. Otter. Is what they bring with them for voice recording. So the Otter needs to be set up within the Zoom cloud. So when they come in, that that account that they use, they have an account right now and it's currently set up with Zoom, so they should be good to go. But if they don't, they need to make sure that they set it up within the Zoom cloud. And that's something the city of Jacksonville Zoom administrator will set up. But what it does is it allows for them to retrieve their recordings. They can retrieve the video, they can retrieve um, the audio, or they can retrieve a text transcription of the meeting. So it'll play back a transcribed version. One of the things with that, and a caveat to it, something you'll notice and it might come up, is the speakers on that side, when they're logged into Zoom, if they're not City of Jacksonville speakers or they're at home using their own computer and it's not associated with that account, their name won't show up in the transcriptions. So if they're in City of Jacksonville and that account is associated with the Zoom account, it'll say like Tim Jones and then it'll say what he said because it knows because they're associated with the city of Jacksonville account, all right? The other side of that is if somebody who's at home using their, you know, I play basketball 501 at gmail.com, it's not gonna understand that. So in the transcriptions, you might get like 20 people talking back and forth that are on the far end and there's no introduction. So my suggestion to the ladies at the last location, have people say their name into the microphone when they first come on in the Zoom call. It's kind of a weird thing, but if you can trick them with it and say, we're gonna do a small introduction, just say your name and a couple things about you. And then that user, it'll transcribe their name, a couple things about them, and then you have something to reference when you're going back to look through your transcriptions. Okay, that's the best way to do it without saying, I need everybody to say their name into the microphone. Phone. That seems kind of, you know, invasive. But if you just say, you know, I just, just say your name and a couple of things, your name and where you're from. We'd like to hear from you today. Something nice. Um, so that's all of that. Uh, the, to initiate the recordings within Zoom, just the record button. Once you hit the record button, it's going to record to Otter and Zoom automatically. So you're good to go there. Uh, Screen sharing, you can basically set it up in all the same views that you would normally have. The PC has control of everything and you're good to go. Uh, and that pretty much is it with Zoom. Um, the people on the far end that are at home, you just wanna make sure that the Zoom host sets it up so that the mics are muted when they come in. You don't have to mute video if you don't want to. I usually recommend muting video and audio when people log in and have them just type in the chat, but depends on what type of meeting you're running, if you want to see all their faces or not. Um, uh, security features, don't really need to go into that. If you do want to switch to the camera audio here, like the person here wants to speak, all you have to do is choose your other camera. So I can flip it, I can select integrated webcam, and it's going to come back over here. If this person, excuse me, is the host of the meeting, they can talk. Their face will be there and then as soon as they're done talking and they want it to go back out to the rest of the room you just click right there and then they'll have an overview um, if the people that are in the room don't have their laptop and there's not a close-up of them for the camera it's going to be hard to tell for people on the far end or at home to tell who's talking specifically so that'll work out in most instances I think that's a requirement of the city to have an overview of the whole room so that's what that is here for but you can you know if they have laptops they can sign into the Zoom meeting as well, as long as they receive the Zoom email. As far as everything like that goes, uh, that's pretty much it from the Zoom side. Did you guys have any questions about this? Do they go in a waiting room? They can. Okay. Yep. So, but to do that, to yeah, put they have people to set in up. the waiting room, you need to set up the meetings that way. Right. You can do it yourself. Do you initiate the Zoom meetings? No, I don't initiate you don't. them. Okay. So I think that's more of a question for IDT. Gotcha. If you want them to be in a waiting room, mm -hmm. just let IDT know. You could shoot Robert Gray an email and said, hey, well, Stephen was out there. He mentioned something about a waiting room in Zoom, and then IDT needs to set that up in the administrative settings. Can you please do that? He's either going to give you a yes or no, because the way that Zoom set up for the city of Jax, it's all of the city. Gotcha. So 
it may happen, it may not, I can't guarantee either way. It's based upon the collective because there's many meetings at many different locations. Is it a great idea? Yes. I think people should go into the waiting room first so you can see who's coming into your meetings. That way you can verify if it's somebody you don't know. But the caveat to that is, like I said before, you might have basketballplayer501 at gmail.com and you're like, who's this? <laughs> but you can chat them a message and right. say, just identify yourself at the meeting because your email's not a work email. The other thing to do is when you send out the Zoom email request, just make sure that you only send it to City of Jacksonville or CPAC employees and then you're good to go. Um, scheduling, that type of thing, sharing a screen, all of that functions exactly the same. When you click screen share, you'll just share your screen to everybody that's on the other end. So instead of this camera coming up, like let's say they wanna do a presentation for people, the host can do it and the prime, or the co-host can do it and the primary host can do that. So they can give permissions to other people, I think the way that the administrator settings are set up for the city of Jacksonville, but not everybody can screen share. Uh, so that's Zoom, the Zoom side of things. Um, as far as the PC, I mentioned earlier that if the desktop, and I'll give an example of that. So under display settings, when you right click the desktop, if somebody comes in and they want to screen share, a lot of people have many displays at home and they don't duplicate their display across all of the displays. So right now on that screen right there, you see my settings screen. But if I have it on extend these displays and then keep changes, the other side of my screen is just probably my Windows desktop, I hope. All right, good example. So they may see this and then the people out here are like, what's going on? I can't see your Zoom, what do I do? They have a couple of options. If they don't want them to see what's going on over here, that's perfectly fine. When Zoom's opened up, what they would do is just drag and drop. If I can find my mouse, is it over there? <laughs> my mouse is over there. There it is. Basically, um, whatever window they have open, so I'll just open an email or a Gmail window. So basically you have your Google window. They're just gonna drag and drop it over to the other screen over there. They can drag and drop it over if they wanna do that. That way they can have whatever important writing they have up here and it can be private to them. Or you just tell them simply if it's getting confusing and they're having a hard time. Cause like it doesn't make sense. I have to drag it off that side to get to that side. And you can in the display settings also you can reverse the sides of it, so I can put monitor two over here and monitor one on the right. And the easy way to tell which is on which side is you can hit identify, and then I see a one here, and then a two over here. Somewhere. Two just went off. Okay. <laughs> I promise it was there. It was. Otherwise, Windows let me down. But anyway, that way they can drag it off that direction and it'll make more sense. So now when my mouse goes over there, I know I'm somewhere on that screen. Um, the other way to help them out is just tell them to go into their settings and then turn it off, extend these displays, and click on duplicate these displays, and then keep changes. And then what you'll see is that you have the exact same thing on both screens, and that's the easiest way to do it, to be honest with you. That saves confusion. Uh, if the audio in Windows isn't playing or anything like that, again, it's gonna be right down here in your audio mixer. You're just gonna click on it, and then what you can do is if you open up your sound settings, let's say it just won't flip to the focus right and you can't play audio. If you open up your sound settings and where it says output, USB output, you just wanna make sure that the focus right is selected. You can get the audio, let's say you don't wanna set up the speakers, you don't wanna bring them out, you're just having a small meeting, maybe four or five people are gonna show up. You can set it to the LG display and now all of the audio would come out of the display itself if the volume on the LG was turned up. But for now, you always want to keep it to focus right USB audio. And then anytime audio is played, it's going to come out the speakers to the left and to the right. Okay, now that we have that, that kind of comes to system teardown. This is the best part. So when you're taking apart the system, you don't have to worry about anything, right? It's just Boom, the power is off now. That's it. The focus right powered itself down. There's no more audio coming out of the speakers or anything like that. You just want to pull the cables and make sure that they're not all tangled up. 
and try not to kink them um, over like about 75, 80 degrees. You just don't want to bend them over or make sure there's no knots in them or anything like that when you go to... You mean I can't even braid them? I, yeah, I mean, you can braid them if you want to. <laughs> just play. not real tight. I just play. <laughs> loose, loose braids on them. Yeah. So these, these are the primary cables that are coming out of the unit. You would just unplug these cables. The guys have it set up nice and neat for you for like your next meeting. If you want to leave it this way, you can. Otherwise, this little Velcro straps that are on here, you just undo them. Okay? It's just all Velcroed up so that the cables and everything are out of the way. Um, you just wind it up, set these cables that are here coming through the top right on top of the unit. You're good to go there. The more complicated cables, though, for the system are going to be the ones that are running through the brush grommet down at the bottom. So for these, like the speaker cables, again, you're going to pull and twist. It'll come right out, but you have to remember to go down and underneath. And then you can just wind this back up with the rest of the speaker cable that's there. And then you'll just store it in the drawers that are in the front. There's two 4RU or rack unit drawers that are in the front of the device. And basically those two, they, they should fit. You put one in the top one and one in the bottom one. I don't think they both fit in the single drawer. They may. Um, the HDMI cable is the same way. Uh, what I'd recommend with the HDMI cable though is just unplug it from the TV and then run the cable back and just put it inside and you can just leave it dangle on the inside of the rack. If you want to go the other route with it, you can pull it out because it's much shorter. <laughs> you just pull it out and take it out of here and then leave it on the display. Um, however you want to do it. The, this little guy right here, this yellow cable, this is your quarter inch to over here. It runs through the top, so you don't really have to worry about ever unplugging this one. So yellow doesn't ever come out, green doesn't ever come out. Those ones will always stay. Okay? Um, and that is pretty much the system from beginning to end with the use of Zoom and everything like that. Again, if you have issues, most, if not all, of the answers are going to be in the little guide, the quick reference guide that we made for you. Um, has all of the settings, everything you need. And then the most important part of it is, it on the, is in the back of the diagram, or in the back of the manual, is the CCS presentation customer support information. So if you do have problems, we'll take care of it. Um, we also support you through the warranty of the devices. So. For the life of the devices, just give us a call um, and we can replace the units. Like let's say the amplifier burns out or somebody cranks up the volume too high and blows a speaker. I don't think it'll do that, but if they do, if something happens and that knob gets cranked all the way up and somebody screams into the microphone or something, if that happens, let us know. Um, we'll check on the warranties of the devices for you. I think you have a 90 day, 90 day Ser limited service warranty with us where we'll come out and fix anything um, but the actually it might be 30 days I'd have to check on that I'm gonna say 30 days for sure you have a 30 day service warranty with us maybe 90 days because it's the city of Jacksonville I don't know um, for certain but anyway if the speakers blown or anything like that then let us know we'll take care of it if there's gonna be anything like a cost or anything we'll contact Robert We'll take care of that directly. You guys don't have to worry about it. Just worry about the equipment, making sure it works. We'll help you out here. And enough said. And the city will worry about the other side. But other than that, that's absolutely everything. Did you guys have any questions? Anything at all? Nothing? All right. Thank I you came guys in for late. Your time. So is the screen a touch screen? This big screen is not. Okay. This is 